Hey guys, in this video we will be talking about crustaceans. Just to get you grounded, crustaceans are a subphylum within the larger grouping Arthropoda and are therefore related to insects, spiders, and scorpions. The species of crustaceans we will be discussing live predominantly in marine environments, but like their arthropod relatives, have hard exoskeletons made of chitin. These exoskeletal components protect the organism and allow it to move. Their body segments are divided into specialized functional units called tegmata, which typically consist of a head, thorax, and abdomen. Crustaceans also have jointed appendages, which serve a wide variety of feeding, sensory, and locomotive functions. These appendages are sometimes biramous, meaning branched at the end. Crustaceans spend their early lives as tiny planktonic larvae. All start in a distinct larval stage called the nauplius, then develop into adults by passing through several different developmental stages. To move from one stage to the next, the organism will molt, shedding its old exoskeleton and growing a new one. Many of the species we have seen so far are part of the most iconic class of crustaceans, the mighty Molochostrosa. This class includes the decapods, which possess a well-developed carapace that protects the brachial chamber. This is where the organism's gills are located. Decapods always possess three pairs of feeding appendages called maxillipeds, and five pairs of periopods. Anterior periopods are often clawed and used for hunting and defense. Lobsters are large benthic decapods that possess a heavily scleratized exoskeleton and well-developed abdomens that end in a tail fan. This tail fan is made up of a telson and appendages called uropods. Shrimp possess a similar body plan, but are generally smaller in size and have a long pointy rostrum that protrudes from the head. The head contains three pairs of feeding appendages called maxillipeds and long pairs of antennae that serve as sensory structures. Shrimp walk with their periopods, swim forwards with their pleopods, and dart backwards by rapidly beating their urosome and telson. Crabs are decapods with a wide, flat carapace and dorso-eventually flattened bodies. Their abdomen is reduced to a scleratized flap beneath the thorax and do not possess uropods or a telson. Crabs, shrimp, and lobsters are familiar to most people because they make up some of the most economically valuable marine fisheries on the planet. But crustacean diversity extends far past what just shows up on our dinner plates. Let's take a look at some of the other classes. Copepods are a class that should not be overlooked. These entirely pelagic organisms are critical links between primary producers and higher tropic levels in marine ecosystems. Copepods also play an important role in the ocean's biological pump, which transports organic carbon from the surface to depth. Let's take a look at some copepod anatomy. These organisms have a single median eye, long first antenna that are used for locomotion, and cetos appendages that help the animal resist sinking. Their bodies are divided into a five-segment cephalosome, a six-segment metasome, and a five-segment urosome. Copepods are also characterized by a point of anatomical flexure, where the body abruptly narrows. Unlike the free-swimming copepods, the cirripedia, aka barnacles, spend the majority of their lives firmly attached to hard substrates. Life as a barnacle begins like most other crustaceans, as floating nobular larvae. Barnacle nobulus, however, eventually enters a separate stage, during which it stops feeding and searches for a suitable settlement location. After attaching to a substrate, the carapace morphs into a mantle of calcareous plates that enclose the body, and thoracic segments develop into feeding appendages called cirri. These animals are filter feeders and use these feathery structures to swoop plankton, detritus, and other tiny prey into their mouths. The groups of crustaceans I have highlighted represent only a minuscule fraction of the diversity that exists in the world's oceans. We are constantly discovering new species and deepening our knowledge of how these incredible organisms support ecosystems, economies, and cultures. By seeking to more fully understand these animals, we learn how connected we are to the environment around us and realize that a world with their best interests in mind, in turn, serves ours.